I'm Robert Bell. We are here at the 2012 NAB show, speaking with senior executives of our member companies who are thought leaders in the media distribution space. And here's what they have to say about the enormous changes taking place in media distribution today. Yes, I'm pleased to do that. So essentially, um, there is a lot of change within Viasat. Um, coming from the field you are just explaining, being a leader in modem technology and networks. Um, and the change really started by acquiring wild, what used to be Wild Blue, um, being a service provider in the consumer broadband market, and then starting to use um, the advances of high capacity KA band satellites, which Wild Blue did initially, and then what, um, what we are really proud of is um, being able to launch our own new satellite, Viasat-1, in October of last year, which is um, essentially augmenting all that capacity. So it's a satellite with about 140 gigabits per second capacity, which is more than all satellites over the United States combined. And the primary business is the consumer broadband business, and the vision of the company really is using that technology to, uh, to elevate satellite communication for consumers from um, a service of more or less last resort um, to a service of choice. So now why we are here at, um, at NEB, we, we believe that the advances of high capacity KA band um, can play an important role for that industry here. And essentially, um, overlaying the consumer business with the enterprise business and broadcast and media makes a lot of sense since uh, it's a complementary service. Um, the consumer business is making use of the satellite in a way that um, it's heavily uh, using traffic on the what we call the forward link. So you send a couple of commands to the internet, but you are downloading quite a lot of content. Uh, what we are doing here with the satellite SNG trucks is using the satellite in the other direction. So we are pushing video, um, high quality HD video from the terminal to the satellite. So therefore we are using the, the, the asset we have in space in a very efficient way. So that's essentially from a company perspective why we are here. Now, for the broadcaster, how does this service work? Is it something new and different that they've never seen before in SNG, or is it, are they going to see pretty much what they've always seen? <laughs> well, you know, SNG satellite news gathering is around for a long time. So what is now really new is moving from KU band to another band in KA band. And, um, the, the, what, what, what is, that, that's the main difference, right? But the advantages being brought on uh, by that change is that now you have a lot more capacity to use in that new band and therefore you can do uh, more uh, for more customers uh, at a lower price point. That's essentially uh, the benefit. And then also um, having developed that system for consumer services, um, uh, it, it, it's very helpful to bringing the price for the terminal you're using down. So it's not uh, an obstacle to move from KU band to KA band since it's quite affordable. For the broadcaster or the truck operator, is the service booked the same way and you know, pointed the same way and so forth? As as traditional KU satellite news gathering, or is it more of an internet-like experience, more of an experience of a broadcast journalist uh, being in his hotel room and plugging in and doing a story that way over the internet? Well, it's kind of um, both things you're mentioning, right? So we have the, the, the regular SNG truck business. Um, uh, due to the fact that we have so much capacity, you really do not need to book in advance. So essentially, it's a one push button operation. And once um, you, know, you have pointed and acquired the network, uh, you, can, you, can, you, you, are, you have a broadband environment in the truck and you can push your video back to the station. And then we also have um, uh, flyaways, um, as you can see up front here. 
and that's more the internet environment you are talking about. You know, it's you set it up and you are on. The engineering of a K band network like Viasat ones is very specific, very tight, very very integrated, uh, and this represents a different approach to the use of the network. And I'm interested how you see this news gathering operation working with the rest of that KA band business because all of a sudden you're pointing something that's not one of the, your eight gateways. I think eight is the number. You're not just pointing from a gateway into the satellites, you actually have a, a, a yes. an on-the-fly application pointing at Yeah, you are absolutely right. So it's a different environment. Um, in, 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 this, in that industry because in KU band it's, a, it's an open standard system um, um, it's applying DVB and normally a broadcaster has a receive station at his uh, broadcast station in our case um, um, it's a hybrid system um, using a satellite portion and a very intensive ground infrastructure um, in, in the case of Viasat 1 with 17 gateways which are interconnected by high-speed fiber and from there you know you need to provide um, an MPLS connection back to the station to have end-to-end -end quality of service. Um, the reason we, we, we did that is that you are able to optimize um, the service um, in, in the, the space side uh, of the system in conjunction with the crown system to be able to provide that kind of experience to the end users. So even it's um, now different for the broadcasters, they started to become used to uh, that kind of system since uh, they all started using the bonded cellular systems, the backpack systems, and that's also um, using um, an environment which is actually not under the control of the broadcaster. Um, which is uh, a benefit in our case is we still are able to provide quality of service end-to-end. -end. In the cellular environment you're not able to guarantee anything. You mentioned this is an example of an enterprise service. Are there other enterprise services planned that you're able to talk about? Uh, well, um, uh, what, what, what we are doing in, on the enterprise side you might have heard of is uh, also going into the air mobile market catering to airlines, providing broadband connection in flight. Um, we are very proud of that and that's going to start with our launch customer JetBlue towards the end of the year. So that's an enterprise market uh, we are going into. And then, you know, using the same service in, in, in a typical environment for oil and gas, um, uh, automotive, um, um, Disaster recovery that's similar to you know also to broadcast similar requirements you need to be anywhere right uh, and you, ne you need to have broadband connectivity at those kind of places instantaneously. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, what we are seeing already today is that um, the landscape in television is changing. Um, um, the way um, people watch television is changing, right? There is a lot of discussion using over-the-top technologies, um, you know, uh, looking at content provided uh, over the internet, um, and, and the broadcast networks actually are rethinking the way how to get to the eyeballs, right? So the challenge really is to be able to be interactive on demand and then being able to bring the content to the consumer, to the customer, um, to any kind of device, uh, cell phones, iPads and televisions. Um, so th that is changing already today and um, we believe that the high capacity KA band technology can play an important role here. First of all because it's a hybrid technology. Um, so you can use the terrestrial infrastructure uh, kind of uh, in a cloud environment to be able to use it as a content distribution network and then also the satellite portion can be used in that uh, distribution environment because uh, it's based on spot beams 
so you can localize content and bring content to a city or a specific DMA. And um, that brings a lot of um, better granularity to the broadcasters. And we will work over the next couple of years to um, leverage those kinds of benefits of the technology for the broadcast industry.